This is a solar rechargeable USB power bank, and I was sent it because the person uh, who had bought it on eBay um, was expecting one that matched the one they had already, a 5,000 milliamp power capacity, and they said it was really disappointingly low. And I agree, I ran it down flat, and then I charged it using... Which one did I use? I used the this uh, USB charge monitor, and... It uh, showed a capacity of just over 1.6 amp hour, 1,600 milliamp hour, which is well short of the 5,000 milliamp hour it, it quotes. But it all got a bit weird after that because I was just playing about with it and I plugged some things in. I mean, here's a little uh, USB light that I've modified so it's green. Oh, let's uh, turn that on like that. So there, there it is. Uh, it's showing full charge. It shouldn't really be showing full charge. It's gonna going weird at the moment. Something has smoked inside, I think. Uh, and if I plug that in the other side, it lights on the other side too. But I discovered if I plug this in, or uh, this, I'll use this because uh, it, it's, you know, it's uh, something I've used already here. So if I plug this in, it just kills the thing stone dead. Instantly it just shorts out. And if I plug, say, this Matic USB monitor in, it's got no problem. It runs fine. It's And... Like then, I can actually plug this into there, and it's fine with that as well. So um, there's something going on in this port, and I reckoned it was to do with the fact that with the USB connectors, uh, you have the four connections inside. The two middle ones are the data, and you've got five volts, and you've got zero volts. And in some devices, the Zero volts is connected to the metal shell. That's for things like it's to for continuity of screening. It's for things like cables that have a screened sheath, uh, and that just grounds it at, at, at the plug end. And I reckoned that uh, it was possible maybe they'd connected the five volt to the uh, screen in here instead. But uh, when I measured between it. I actually got, from the, the side that was working to the side that was doing that shorting out thing, I actually got the battery voltage of about 3.6 volts. And it made me wonder, is this, was this shorting out the battery completely when that was plugged in? And uh, I did a earlier, I, you know, this is the second time I've done this video because then I got the meter out and I was going to show you about that voltage and it's not showing the voltage now. And the little battery indicator is showing a completely ridiculously different voltage to what the battery is charged to. So um, let's uh, open it up and see what's going on here. It looks like there's a bit of a faux pad design. Oh, this has also got the wee uh, LED in it uh, that you can double click for on, double click for off. So, um, and of course it's got the micro USB charging point. So how does this come open? I don't see screws in the back. I'm guessing the rubber bumper might be hiding things. Ooh, I see clips. It's the same at the other side. Yes, it is. Okay, screwdriver. It's quite a neat unit. Uh, it says in the eBay listings it's waterproof. I'm, I'm very seriously doubting it's the slightest bit waterproof at all. Ooh, that doesn't uh, come apart very easy. Oh, there's more clips at the side. Let's get spudger into it without pushing it right into the lithium pack. Okay. Right, first experiment I'm going to do here. Oh, that uh, rubber thing comes out completely. That's quite neat. First experiment I'm going to do. Actually, let's get the solar panel off it first to get out of the way. I'll just clip that and leave a wee bit of the red insulation on so I know where it goes. Fine. 
First thing I'm tempted to do is measure the battery voltage directly on this battery. It's quite a big battery, it's not it's not the full size in there. I think it, they've got these little pads to pack it out. Hmm. But anyway, let's measure the voltage across it. Oh, you know what? Is that a wee splash of solder there? No, it's not bridging across. Unless uh, that skid mark is possibly something I've blown clear in my experimentation. Or oh, I tell you what, that's weird. It's like there's a vapour of solders kind of like all over the, this. Like it's just the manufacturing process is just sort of spattered uh, some sort of, sort of solder. Oh, that is not, they are not connected correctly. I would have thought these two would have been connected together directly. But it doesn't look like it. Okay, let's investigate this. Uh, oh, I am seeing a bridge. Oh, that's a significant bridge. Oh, that that's, uh, is the charge sensing circuitry. There's a solder bridge across here. That's what's been doing that. So just out of interest, I think that's probably blown that resistor then. So um, just out of interest, let's put that in there and that in there. So that's the battery voltage. Let's uh, plug this in and see what actually happens. It's not shorting out the battery, which is good, but having said that, I think whatever has been giving the problem has been smoked by now. And it may actually be that little resistor. Not, or is it a diode? I think it's a diode. Yeah. I'm not sure if you guys can see that if I hold it up. That big splodge there is what's been the problem there. But uh, that doesn't change, or does it change the fact this might or might not be the rated capacity. Um, but that's certainly that's uh, certainly what I'd call a bit of a dodgy issue. Uh, right, so uh, let's say uh, I get this battery off. Hold on, I'm just going to, rather than wait for the big iron to heat up, let's uh, use the cordless iron for this one. Let's grab a bit of solder. I'm going to desold the battery and remove it. And we'll see if there's anything printed on the battery that gives any clue at all to its actual capacity. So let's throw a wee bit more solder onto there. And lift that wire off. A wee bit more solder under there. Oop. This cordless iron is actually really handy for little tasks like this. You just want to grab it and it, it heats up in seconds. It's very good. So let's uh, see if I can get this out without it exploding in flames. This is where I'm not sure you should actually slide metal objects under a battery. That is precarious, isn't it? That's kind of foolish. Should I get my explosion containment pie dish handy? Explosion containment pie dish, just in case I have a little incident trying to prise this out. I wonder how many people have been changing the batteries in their iPhone or whatever, and because most of these things, they tend to glue them in, and they've had it blow up in them. Oh, that is kind of like squirmily stuck in. It really is just stuck in with a pad in there. Ooh, this is uh, slightly precarious. What's the worst could happen? Oh, I won't use the pointy end. Ooh, that is precarious. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like these uh, batteries that you have to prise them out like this. That is stuck in with a double-sided pad quite significantly. Let's take the circuit board out and see if that frees it up a wee bit. I wonder if the battery's been damaged in any way by the that circuit problem. Not 100% sure. Or maybe even the charge uh, monitoring circuitry might have been damaged. So 
It's a sort of ceramic -y bit. O off the inductor. That's nice. Oh, I can see the glue giving a wee bit. That's better. Oh, it's not revealing anything anyway. There's no data in that, is there? No, it's fairly anonymous. Glued in though, it's, uh, it's not uh, I thought that was a double-sided pad. No wonder it was just a little bit curious taking it out. Okay, let's uh, put that in the lithium containment dish anyway. So other than that, what do we have here? We have lots of little four pin, uh, six pin chips. 8205, is that not a MOSFET package? Is it 8205? DW01, the classic uh, protection chip for the charging circuitry. And then this little anonymous chip, as they always are, that controls the LEDs and the sort of charging status. So um, I don't see, I, I see that's kind of cracked, but I think that's just because it's been. Uh, you know, maybe in manufacturing or transit it's cracked. I don't think that's uh, been caused by this issue. So, um, yeah, so I wonder what's actually, this is actually taken out. I wonder if it's damaged that wee diode or something like that, that splash of solder. The soldering is just not nice in the back of this. It's got that spatter over there. So, um, yeah, not... Other than that, you know, the quality of it looks, the quality of manufacture looks quite nice. I thought that was originally a design fault that that uh, solder, you know, that w was commoned onto that like that, but uh, it just appears to be. Um, I wonder if the solder's even parted company or if it's just burnt the track a wee bit away underneath it. Uh, but it just appears to be a bad manufacturing thing that they've uh, been a bit overzealous with the soldier and that might also be part of the reason it's all splattered over that side. It's an interesting thing. I might put it back together. I'm not 100% sure. It's not, got a, it's not got the promised capacity, but um, shame because, you know, other than that, it looks quite neat, but it really, that's not going to be waterproof, is it, at all? Is this solar panel? Does this solar panel come out? Yes, it does. Let's uh, check that out. Now let's see, it's got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so it should put out about 5 volts roughly. This is where I have to try and uh, get connections on but not cover it while I hold up to the light. Yeah, five volts ish. Not getting a gate connection because I'm trying to hold it up to the light at the same time. Yep. I wonder what its uh, short circuit current is under the uh, under the uh, floodlights there. So let's uh, stick it to and see if it's a decent uh, capacity cell. Let's see. It's going to be about. Let's stick it to 200 milliamps. It's possibly going to be about 100, I'd guess, for that size. But again, that would only be under direct sunlight. So let's uh, do a short circuit current test on it. Um, okay, so under the 20 watt light, it's putting out about, yeah, about 12 milliamps. Not sure what that'd be like in full sunlight. It's hard to really I've not got anything I can really compare with, have I? Have I got a solar panel here I can compare with? I thought I had a solar panel knocking about, but yeah, uh, no, that's that's not a very big one. Oh, it is actually. It's a, quite a similar size, but with them more spread out. Let's see what this one gets with the short circuit uh, underneath the same light. About the same actually, it's not too bad. 
Yeah, so maybe that would put out a decent, that would maybe put one or two hundred milliamps out in full sunlight. So it was interesting to take to bits, it's a bit of an odd thing, I'd, I'm not convinced that this, although it feels quite heavy, I wonder if, if it's just, you know, they're skimping in the, the battery size, but uh, it was quite fun to take to bits really. Um, yeah, other than, other than the soldering, it's quite, it's, you know, it's fairly neat assembly and quite a neat little unit. I've been playing around with this a little bit more and I've discovered one less than desirable feature. Now that, uh, the shell, it turns out the shells of these are actually isolated completely, they're not connected to negative, but um, when I'd uh, had this plugged in the other side it had been connected to negative, it, that's about how I'd got continuity through and was able to actually measure the voltage difference between the two. Because this one definitely was connected but that splash of solder it was connected directly to the positive terminal of the battery. However, the solar charging circuitry in this, although the uh, micro USB does have the proper charge control and the 4.2 volt cap, it, uh, the solar panel is connected with its negative directly connected to the battery negative and the positive connected through a Schottky diode to the battery positive. And the solar panel on a bright sunny day is going to put out up to about, say about 6 volts. Uh, minus the 0.3 volts across the Schottky diode, it uh, means that you, you could potentially, it, it's going to be char trying to charge the lithium cell if it was already pretty fully charged and you put it out in bright sunshine for a day, it could potentially try and charge that lithium cell to over 5 volts. I'm not sure um, how far it would get, uh, you know, in terms of the uh, energy sort of capacity and the versus, you know, the sunshine, but I, I have to say, I wouldn't feel comfortable leaving this uh, out in bright sunshine in case it did actually overcharge the cell. Just for reference, I'm not sure if it's a good way of judging things, but this uh, cell weighs 68 grams because I just weighed it. So I don't know if that's an indication of what its capacity should be. Um, it's possible that it has suffered damage as a result of this short circuit issue. But, um, yeah, interesting unit. Uh, it's a shame about that bad soldering. It's kind of you know, otherwise it, it wouldn't be too bad a unit. It's quite a smart little device, oh, but definitely not waterproof. I wouldn't trust it, you know, in, in rain or anything like that. I wouldn't leave it lying in the grass outside, expect it to take charge and not fill up with water. But uh, other than that, you know, it's, it's physically quite neat, but uh, yeah, with with its limits. <laughs>